The only way to lead people is to show them a future. A leader is a dealer in hope. Napoleon Bonaparte. Welcome explorers and seekers of the past. Imagine a man rising from humble beginnings to become the ruler of one of the most powerful nations in the world. A man whose ambition and military genius changed the course of history forever. This is the story of Napoleon Bonaparte. Make sure you watch the whole video. We've got all the answers to your questions. Napoleon Bonaparte, one of history's most enigmatic figures, rose from humble beginnings to become the ruler of one of the most powerful nations in the world. How did he do it? What made him one of the greatest military leaders of all time? And what ultimately led to his downfall? In this video, we will explore the rise of Napoleon Bonaparte, delving into the key events and major turning points that shaped his life and legacy. Education and Early Military Career of Napoleon On August 15, 1769, in Ajaccio, on the Mediterranean island of Corsica, Napoleon Bonaparte was born. He was the second of Carlo Bonaparte's 1746 to 1885, eight surviving children. Born to Letizia Romolino Bonaparte, 1750 to 1836. His parents were little Corsican aristocracy, but the family wasn't particularly affluent. The Italian city-state of Genoa sold Corsica to France the year before Napoleon was born. Later, Napoleon changed the spelling of his last name to French, which of course as we all know it, Napoleon Bonaparte. He graduated from a French military academy in 1785 and became a second lieutenant in an artillery regiment. He joined the Jacobins, a political movement supporting democracy during the French Revolution. He was briefly placed under house arrest after the fall of the Robespierre brothers, but was appointed Major General and helped quell a royalist uprising in Paris in 1795. The reason most people fail instead of succeed is they trade what they want most for what they want at the moment. Napoleon Bonaparte Early Military Triumphs of Napoleon Napoleon is primarily remembered for a series of remarkable military successes in 1796 to 1797. He seized control of all of northern Italy during that time, forcing the Habsburgs to cede their holdings there and pursue control of the Netherlands as well. To weaken the British position in Egypt, he also oversaw a military expedition. Although his campaign there did not have the desired impact, he did manage to score several very impressive military successes. In France, there was extensive coverage of this. This wasn't just a military mission, he also brought along what would be considered a public relations team to keep an eye on him at all times. Napoleon had become well known in France as a result of his spectacular triumphs in Egypt and northern Italy. By 1799, Napoleon had gained widespread recognition and popularity across the nation, while the Directory continued to lose favor and was utterly unable to arouse any form of excitement. How did Napoleon gain power? Many Directory members looked to Napoleon in November 1799 for assistance in setting up a stable government that could withstand the ongoing risks of resurgent radicalism and resurgent royalism. Two Directory members approached Napoleon and conspired with him and his brother Louis to overthrow the ineffective administration and install a more powerful one that could steer France in a new direction. The day of this coup would be November 9, 1799. Three consuls would share authority under the new system of administration that had been established. You already notice a certain phrase that refers to consuls rather than the revolution or even the previous administration, which refers to the Roman Empire. Napoleon was to be the first consul and primus inter pares, or first among equals, in the triumvirate of power. At this point, there were already two characteristics that stood out about him. The first was his tremendous ambition, and the second was his outstanding charisma. Napoleon strengthens his hold on power. Napoleon appointed himself as a lifetime consul in 1802, 
which was approved by a national plebiscite, showing his aspiration to rule. In 1804, he proclaimed himself emperor, using a fake royalist plan and asserting that there was a plot to restore the Bourbon dynasty. He portrayed himself as the rightful heir to the revolution while being a military man, a man of affairs, and in some respects, a pragmatic. His system raises questions about the nature of the empire, whether it was an authoritarian rule with democratic forms or a new political synthesis combining authoritarian rule with democratic forms. Make sure to subscribe to History Flicks and dig up that bell icon so you won't miss any of our historical updates. What was the Napoleonic Code? He implemented the Napoleonic Code, a uniform system of justice that ensured equality before the law and required all citizens to bear the financial burdens of the state. Guaranteed freedom of religion and profession dealt a blow to the old guild system and signaled support for business and trade. He believed that a legitimate post-revolutionary government required a constitution, and his regime was built on the principles of popular sovereignty and citizen participation through education and the emphasis on careers open to talent. Reign of Napoleon the reign of Napoleon from 1803 to 1815 was marked by a series of major conflicts with European nations known as the Napoleonic Wars. In 1803, to raise funds for future wars, Napoleon sold the Louisiana Territory in North America to the United States. In 1805, Napoleon's fleet was defeated at the Battle of Trafalgar, but later, he achieved a significant victory at the Battle of Austerlitz, which dissolved the Holy Roman Empire and created the Confederation of the Rhine. In 1806, Napoleon established the continental system to wage economic warfare against Britain by creating European port blockades against British trade. In 1807, the Treaty of Tilsit was signed after the French defeated the Russians at Friedland in Prussia. In 1809, the French defeated the Austrians at the Battle of Wagram, resulting in further gains for Napoleon. During this period, Napoleon re-established a French aristocracy and began handing out titles of nobility to his loyal friends and family as his empire expanded across much of Western and Central Continental Europe. The First Abdication and Fall of Napoleon In 1810, Russia withdrew from the continental system. In response, Napoleon led a large army into Russia in the summer of 1812. Instead of engaging the French in a full-scale battle, the Russians employed a strategy of retreat, which led to Napoleon's troops trekking deeper into Russia without proper preparations. The French suffered heavy casualties in the indecisive Battle of Borodino, and upon arriving in Moscow, they discovered the population had been evacuated. The Russians set fires in the city to deprive the enemy troops of supplies. After waiting for a surrender that never came, Napoleon was forced to order his starving, exhausted army out of Moscow. During the retreat, his army suffered continual harassment from a suddenly aggressive and merciless Russian army. Of 600,000 troops who began the campaign, only an estimated 100,000 made it out of Russia. At the same time, French forces were engaged in the Peninsular War 1808 to 1814, which resulted in the Spanish and Portuguese, with the assistance of the British driving the French from the Iberian Peninsula. In 1813, the Battle of Leipzig, also known as the Battle of Nations, Napoleon's forces were defeated by a coalition that included Austrian, Prussian, Russian, and Swedish troops. Napoleon then retreated to France, and in March 1814 coalition forces captured Paris. On April 6, 1814, Napoleon, then in his mid-40s, was forced to abdicate the throne, and was exiled to Elba, a Mediterranean island off the coast of Italy. He was given sovereignty over the small island, while his wife and son went to Austria. Battle of Waterloo and the Hundred Days Campaign In 1815, after less than a year in exile, 
Napoleon escaped Elba and returned to France, where he was welcomed by cheering crowds. He began a hundred days campaign and raised a new army to strike against the coalition of allies who considered him an enemy. In June 1815, his forces invaded Belgium and defeated the Prussians at the Battle of Ligny, but were crushed by the British and Prussians at the Battle of Waterloo. On June 22, 1815, Napoleon was forced to abdicate for a second time. The Final Years of Napoleon Napoleon was banished to the inaccessible British-controlled island of St. Helena in the South Atlantic Ocean in October 1815. He passed away there on May 5, 1821 at age 51, most likely from stomach cancer. Napoleon frequently posed for portraits when in power with his hand in his waistcoat, which led to some posthumous claims that he had been troubled by stomach pain for years. Napoleon requested to be buried on the banks of the Seine, among the French people I have loved so dearly, but was instead interred on the island. His bones were brought back to France in 1840 and placed in a crypt at Les Invalides in Paris with other French military leaders. Despite his defeats and exile, Napoleon remains a fascinating figure in history. His legacy was complex, as his accomplishments and ambitions were not without consequence. He set a standard of political leadership and military. If you like this, you might also want to see our other video about an even bigger conqueror, Genghis Khan.